Hi, my name is Paweł Spychalski and this topic about FRSky access and FRSky access for R9 radio system, the 868, 800 MHz radio system, is divided into two videos by purpose and was recorded as two separate videos. You are currently watching the video number two about my feelings, commentaries, what I think about the situation. If you are interested in the facts video, I invite you to the link down in the description to see how, what are the facts about the FRSky access and what does it mean for us. And now the commentary part of the FRSky R9 access. I don't want to say drama because it's not here a drama. I over the years I'm quite short in this hobby because it's only like the fifth flying season for me. I peacefully without any any problems I spent quite a lot of money buying FRSky products. Um, I, I even counted. I did a quick math and it was uh, around 400, 450 dollars yearly on the FRSky hardware. Transmitters, radios, receivers, antennas, absolutely. I had no problems with spending that money on the FRSky gear because that was the good gear. Let's say there was an agreement between, an unspoken agreement between me and the FRSky. And to be honest, I, I think a lot of other people also had this unspoken agreement that I will quietly throw my money at them. Okay of course in the limited uh, limited amount and on the other hand they will deliver the systems the products that just work without trying to screw me over with a decent quality i'm not saying that this is the Efrosky is the best quality ever absolutely not no probably the futabas and uh, other super expensive radios that nobody buys is a better quality because quality comes with price but FR Sky quality was just a good quality I, I, I until the, today I'm sure I love my uh, X9D I had I also kind of liked but did not really very much like the QX7 and I love the X10S not Express that I currently have and use good quality good radios no problems even though they are not the cheapest but they had good quality and I think I think really also many other people had similar feelings because let's be honest FR Sky dominated the market it's FR Sky and then long long nothing just look around uh, at your colleagues you fly with which radios are they using is it FR Sky Fly Sky yeah someone uses Fly Sky when he's only beginning is it Futaba maybe if you are old school uh, structure airplane pilot then maybe uh, everybody else almost everybody else it's it's the first sky so they really dominated the market and now what's happening okay okay then there there is this r9 system which it's a good hardware r9 is a good hardware it's not as good as crossfire can be but this is also visible in the number of functions and the price tag and a similar aspect of this but nevertheless it's a good product that when configured and flashed correctly with the correct firmware really can go for miles without any problems here with the r9 something started to break with the fr sky first of all the r9 was not ready to enter the market when it entered the market the firmware was crappy the receivers were big it was not working breaking fail safing a tragedy really tragedy then they started to improve things there was this flex i'm using flex right now i'm using the latest flex from the february this year 2019 on all my receivers on my radios i think it's great it's fly it works without any problems i fly there i fly there i have some problems sometimes with telemetry but because this is because of the 
the pure hardware things that I, I, I did and I have to actually replace the transmitter module, but it works fantastic. And now, what's happening? Out of the blue, after Sky, for me, breaks the contract. How? By trying to screw me over. How they try to screw me over? Not uh, the fact that last year I buy the flagship of the FR Sky X10S, I cannot get R9 access right now. It's fine that I cannot get uh, 2.4 GHz access because I'm almost not using 2.4 GHz access. I'm using mainly R9 and I actually would like to receive software updates. Like, I know that the hardware is capable, for example, of the te ser transparent serial link. I not Maybe not OTA, I, nev I was never really like very much into the OTA, but it, 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 in theory, with the different receiver, it should be possible. I find out that the only reason I cannot use access and my existing and my existing R9M is not compatible with the R9 access is because of the speed of the fucking link between radio and module. It's not that it's different air protocol, different CPU or a different uh, radio chipset. No, it's only fucking inventors. Inverters. And I would, if I would like to receive the software updates, not only I, I don't have to re 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 change the receivers at all, I have to replace the transmitter and I have to replace radio, or even worse, that really like boiled me inside. I can buy, imagine that, at least not yet because it's not yet on the market, I can buy the upgrade kit for 80 bucks for my X10S. I can just replace some elements inside of the radio and have access again. What the fuck? What really? Honestly? Honestly, the Express is only Express. This 10 X10 S Express is only because <laughs> they fixed some inverters on the internal module. Come on. And naming. Come on, it's naming. Old R9M and new R9M with year 2019. But whoever listen, not not naming it. R9N or for example R9M2 or Q or S that with the really distinct name that this is a different hardware. No, yeah, 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 it's R9, but 2019 edition. It doesn't matter if it was manufactured 2019 or sold 2019. Yeah, it, it's the special one. It's the special one. And I bet even the name of the on the transmitter is not that very like visible. This sounds like they are trying to make things more complicated than they really have to be. Why? To get money from me. To get the, to get the new radio, to buy a new radio, to buy this ungodly upgrade kit, new transmitter and stuff like that. I feel, I feel violated. Well, okay, maybe, maybe the violated is not the correct word, but I I, I no longer can say that I'm willing to throw my money at FR Sky anymore. This is not honest behavior, because why? Come on! Again, a year later I have to buy the flagship radio again to be able to have firmware updates for the receivers that use the same, really like the, the LoRa chipset is the same. You know? Come on, it doesn't, it, do, it just doesn't feel right. <sighs> the contract, yeah, and there's this... Okay, I... Like I said, I don't like the situation. Mm, also, imagine, imagine what happens when um, next year FR Sky stops you selling R9M or R9MM or R9 Slim because they no longer sell this crap. They only start to sell R9 Super, which has only access. You have to update because you cannot buy new receivers that, which use the same radio chipset, exactly the same, but the access firmware is only for R9 Super. You have to get R9 Super. There is no flex for the R9 Super, so I have to go access. And because I want to go access, I have to buy R9M 
2019 and because I got R9M 2019 I want to use Access, I also have to buy X10X Express. Cool, right? A great way to force people to spend a shitload, really a shitload of money on the new, on the new system. Not cool. Honestly, honestly, FR Sky, this is not cool. It's clearly visible since starting from this year, somewhere like that, that you stopped acting really cool. We have this jumper drama when they bash the jumper saying that uh, T16 is a copy whale. Clearly it isn't. The video is in the description. And uh, X9 Lite, which is better but worse. Now we have this whole access situation. I, I am really considering migrating my whole fleet to the TBS Crossfire. Honestly, I'm really like counting how much it will cost me how much coins it will cost me to migrate to Crossfire. Not because Crossfire is better, but because I would like to be sure that in a year, at least expect that in the year I would still be getting software updates and I would, won't be forced in this sneaky way to replace everything. Because sooner or later FRSky is making me, trying to make me replace everything. So why should I throw money on them when I can just migrate to Crossfire? Um, my problem is that my fleet is rarely, um, it's rather big, it's around 8 to 10 flying thingies. And I would have to buy receiver, probably the Crossfire Mini, because I don't like the big one. I don't need so much power, so much watts on the output. But still, this is between 300 and 400 dollars or euros to replace. And I'm really very strongly considering this. If not this year, if the situation with Ever Sky will continue, then yes, probably next year I will just replace. Ever sky transmitters with crossfire. Why? Because over here the TBS is more honest. It's like there is this agreement. The agreement between the customers of the crossfire and the users has not been breached and uh, they are more expensive than the first sky, but apparently slightly <sighs> slightly more honest. So this is the end of the commentary. Mm, please write in the comments how do you feel about this. The Telegram R9 users group is rather also not very happy with the current situation. Um, put your thoughts over there. Um, I tried to be, let's say, as calm as I could be in this video. Do you agree with the fact that the first guy tries to screw us over or maybe they are just doing their stuff. Who knows? Who knows what you think? Um, but they really expect that everyone in the hobby will get a new radios? Fuck! We are not FIFA nine. We are not FIFA players. The the game. So every year a new game, the same game, the new number. <sighs> okay. Um, that's all for today. Until the next one. Uh, bye bye.